And so the frenzy of building went on. As the expressways drove through, and the tall towers rose, and whole districts were demolished to make room for high-rise housing projects, and building after building of glass and steel. By the 60s, we knew that urban renewal was a failure. We knew that it had taken the heart and the gut out of cities. But New York's urban renewal had started in the 50s and was moving along like an unstoppable juggernaut. And there were, of course, deals made between the government and between the real estate people, the developers. It was nothing that those of us who cared about could stop. It was a done deal. In 1956, a 30-year-old poet named Allen Ginsberg, living on East 7th Street in the village, sought to capture the increasingly impersonal and alien landscape of the city, which he depicted as the insatiable Old Testament god Moloch, to whom children were ritually sacrificed. What sphinx of cement and aluminum hacked open their skulls and ate up their brains and imagination? Moloch, the incomprehensible prisons. Moloch, the crossbones, soulless jailhouse and congress of sorrows. Moloch, whose buildings are judgment. Moloch, whose eyes are a thousand blind windows. Moloch, whose skyscrapers stand in the long streets like endless Jehovah's. Moloch, Moloch, robot apartments, invisible suburbs skeleton treasuries, demonic industries, spectral nations, invincible madhouses. They broke their backs lifting Moloch to heaven. Pavements, trees, radios, tons. Wake up in Moloch. Light streaming out of the sky. Allen Ginsberg, 1956. As the buildings rise, as the skyscrapers get bigger, as the mechanism of the city becomes more and more dehumanized, as the human being is dwarfed, as finally gigantic uh, thousand windowed Molochs are created that look down on the individual and dwarf the individual and intimidate the individual. And then you find the individual at the mercy of the people up in the big towers that the person has no control over. The, the guy living on East 12th Street has no idea what's going on. And still the building went on. At the southern tip of the island, hundreds of historic buildings would soon be raised to the ground to make room for two immense rectangular towers that would eventually soar higher than the Empire State Building itself.